Hello and welcome to today's Living Life. In today's passage, we'll be looking at a very interesting story about a king who was condemned from the get-go. Usually when we read about the kings, we see something a little bit positive. But in today's story, we hear about a king named King Ahaz, who there's almost, there's pretty much nothing redeeming about him. And you almost read today's verse and scripture and think, why was this included for us today? But what's interesting is, uh, in it, we also see this very interesting principle. In the U.S., we have an expression called, um, it goes, out of the frying pan and into the fire. And the idea is, initially in the frying pan, it seems like everything's like painful and searing and hot, but you jump into a different situation thinking it'll be better, and then you find out it's just as bad, if not worse. And we see that a little bit play out, uh, that principle play out a little bit in the life of King Ahaz. So let's go to today's passage. Let's look into it and let's see where God leads us today. Second Chronicles chapter 28, verses 16 through 27. At that time, King Ahaz sent to the kings of Assyria for help. The Edomites had again come and attacked Judah and carried away prisoners, while the Philistines had raided towns in the foothills and in the Negev of Judah. They captured and occupied Beth Shemesh, Ajalon, and Gadarath, as well as Soko, Timnah, and Gimzo, with their surrounding villages. The Lord had humbled Judah because of Ahaz, king of Israel, for he had promoted wickedness in Judah and had been most unfaithful to the Lord. Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, came to him, but he gave him trouble instead of help. Ahaz took some of the things from the temple of the Lord and from the royal palace and from the officials and presented them to the king of Assyria, but that did not help him. In his time of trouble, King Ahaz became even more unfaithful to the Lord. He offered sacrifices to the gods of Damascus, who had defeated him. For he thought, since the gods of the kings of Aram have helped them, I will sacrifice to them so they will help me. But they were his downfall and the downfall of all Israel. Ahaz gathered together the furnishings from the temple of God and cut them in pieces. He shut the doors of the Lord's temple and set up altars at every street corner in Jerusalem. In every town in Judah, he built high places to burn sacrifices to other gods and aroused the anger of the Lord, the God of his ancestors. The other events of his reign and all his ways from beginning to end are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Ahaz rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of Jerusalem, but he was not placed in the tombs of the kings of Israel. And Hezekiah, his son, succeeded him as king. Welcome back to Living Life. As you saw in today's passage, uh, King Ahaz didn't live a life that was very uh, much of a good model for us today. But we see something interesting play out in his life. And I introduced this idea out of the frying pan into the fire. And what I meant by that when we look in today's passage is uh, what happened just prior to this verse in this section, if you were following with us yesterday especially, uh, you'll be familiar that uh, Ahaz was being attacked by two groups of people from the northern border. And this was the Arameans and the, and the Israelites, their own brothers. So they were getting attacked on, on the northern front. But what this passage today tells us is not only were they being attacked on the northern front, they were also being attacked on the southern and the western front. See, on the northern front, we saw yesterday that they lost miserably, that they were plundered, that they lost, uh, and they were invaded. Uh, and what we actually find in today's passage is, we see that there was a group called the Edomites attacking, and these are the ancient enemies of, Is of Judah of Israel. But we also see a group called the Philistines attacking, which was also a very uh, ancient enemy of uh, the Israelites. And the Philistines, Philistines are attacking from the west, the Edomites are attacking from the south, and if you actually think about it logically, it means they're getting attacked from the north, from the south, and from the west. And what's the logical situation in this, situa in this, in this context? Well, ideally, it actually seems to be asking either help or assistance from the other direction, from the east. So Ahaz does what is actually logical in the situation is he looks for help from an outside neighbor or territory. 
and he turns to a very, very powerful people group called the Assyrians. And he turns to them and he asks them for help. He shoots an SOS out to them. And uh, it's not told us exactly what he says here in Chronicles, but in 2 Kings, in the parallel account, it says, uh, he sends a, uh, King Ahaz sends a messenger to Assyria and he says to him, I am your servant and son, come up and rescue me. So pretty much he swears loyalty. He, swear, he uh, swears fealty to Assyria to, and asks them to help in this situation and to deliver them. But um, to appeal to Assyria, because you're not just going to go and save somebody else for no reason. So what Ahaz does is he rips up the treasury, rips up the gold and the, the silver and all the things within the temple, and he gets other money from his officials and he sends it as an offering and as a tribute in a ways to Assyria. And he gives it to the king of Syria, Tiglas Pileser. And what's interesting is in Second Chronicles, it says that it was no help at all. That uh, Assyria, instead of helping, it says he gave trouble instead of help and it did not help him. What's interesting is in Second Kings, we actually see that actually Assyria did come and they did help. But what this help looks like, I think Chronicles does a good job explaining that it was not really a help to them. So Assyria came in power and they destroyed some of the Aramean forces and they occupied Damascus. And they did temporarily bring peace, but really what Israel, what Judah ended up doing and what King Ahaz ended up doing is they traded one master for another. They submitted themselves to the rule of Assyria. And Ultimately, when 2 Chronicles said that it was no help but actually trouble, is when we look at it from God's lens. What, what ultimately happens is Ahaz brings his offering to Damascus to give to the king of Assyria. And as he goes to Damascus, he is enamored and uh, just surprised by the idols and the, the worship of the gods there. And he begins to think, maybe these gods, I need to worship them. They're so beautiful. They're so fantastic looking. Uh, other, other people groups are worshiping these gods. Maybe if I make them my gods, they will be on my side and then I will have success. Because remember, the gods of the Arameans seem to be more powerful than the gods of, uh, than his god because his, he, was, his was, he was losing. So he could only understand logically that his god was not powerful and maybe this God of the Arameans or the God, this foreign God, the God of Damascus, will be a more powerful God. You see, ultimately what's missing here is understanding that the Lord is God is actually bringing punishment because he turned away from him. He didn't worship him. He allowed idol worship. So instead of being a representative of God, which is the role of the king, he instead uh, found out he was leading the people in idolatry. And therefore, the second chronicle statement that the help from Assyria was no help, but actually was trouble, is a very accurate assessment. Ultimately, when the storms rage in our lives, when we feel like the whole world is against us, when we feel defeated on every side, who do we turn to? King Ahaz turned and used all the wisdom of the world and all the logic of the world to look to a foreign power to help. Ultimately, I think what God was inviting him and wanting him to do is instead turn to God and to seek God for his help. So today, I encourage you to reflect on this understanding right now. King Ahaz in today's passage experienced uh, storms in every direction, fires in every direction, and it seemed like everything was out of control. And I'm sure in some ways that we may have all experienced that to some degree. When things seem so chaotic, when things seem so difficult in every direction, that we don't even know where to breathe or even how to breathe, perhaps. And in that situation, I think God's message for Ahaz and also God's message for us is, don't try to find help outside of Him, but instead bring all your troubles and all your struggles to God and ask God to meet you. And I think that was God's invitation to Ahaz and God's invitation to us. 
So I want to conclude with one passage from uh, Psalm 121. Psalm 121, it opens by saying this, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let's pray together. Father, we pray in the storms of our lives, in the, in the different situations, in the different struggles, that you would help us to turn our eyes to you and to look at you and, you and understand that you are our help, that you have sent your Son, Jesus, to be our help. So Father, I pray that you would help us to see Jesus in the midst of our storms today and even to learn to say, Jesus, I need you. Help me today. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the Lord. 